famous true crime stories of the past century, the Black Dahlia murder. The real name of the woman who became known worldwide as the Black Dahlia was Elizabeth Short. Her grisly murder in 1947 remains one of the most obsessed over cases of all time. Elizabeth Short was a native of Hyde Park, Massachusetts, who moved to Los Angeles in 1942 to reunite with her estranged father, a man that had abandoned Elizabeth and her mother and siblings when she was only six years old. He had so thoroughly disappeared, in fact, that the family and authorities thought he must have committed suicide after being financially ruined in the stock market crash of 1929. It wasn't until years later that Elizabeth's mother received a letter from him apologizing for leaving the family and admitting that he had just been fined the entire time and that he was living in Vallejo, California. A few months later, in January of 1943, Elizabeth moved to Vallejo to be with her father, but they didn't last long together. Within months, he had kicked her out and she found herself struggling on her own. Records show that Elizabeth then got a job at Camp Cook in Lompoc, California, and was living with a U.S. Air Force sergeant. According to what she told friends, the sergeant was abusive, and months later, she moved out again. She bounced around a bit, going back home to Massachusetts and then to Florida, where she fell in love with a major who was killed in combat a week before the end of World War II. She returned to L.A. in July of 1946 in the hopes of being discovered and acting. Elizabeth had good reason to believe she could. She certainly had the looks that were all the vogue at the time. She had lily white skin and raven black hair and had begun dressing in all black, earning her the nickname Black Dahlia from her friends. The moniker was also inspired by the fact that one of Elizabeth's favorite movies was the 1946 noir murder mystery film, The Blue Dahlia. Little did Elizabeth know that she would soon herself become the center of a real life murder mystery. On the morning of January 15, 1947, a woman was taking a walk with her child on a road which ran past the L.A. Lehman Park neighborhood on one side and a vacant lot on the other. It was close to 11 a.m. when she came across a grisly scene. Laying right next to the sidewalk was a nude female body that had been neatly bisected in two precise pieces. The two sections of the body lay a couple of feet apart but were placed misaligned to make it clear to anyone looking that the body was not in one piece. The arms were raised above her head at a 90 degree angle and the victim's legs were splayed wide open. It was clear that the killer, or whoever left her there, had not just dumped the body. They had in fact carefully positioned it and left it out in plain view in order to be discovered. Eerily though, there was a mannequin-like appearance to the body because of the lack of blood. There was no blood anywhere not on the body and not on the area around it. The authorities arrived pretty quickly, within 10 minutes, but someone else arrived even sooner, reporters. By the time the police got there, reporters were already trampling all over the crime scene and taking dozens of pictures of the body. There are even pictures of the photographers taking pictures, literally right on top of her. These pictures aren't hard to find online, but buyer beware, they're graphic and gruesome. The photos show the brutality of the mutilation the victim endured. Chunks of flesh from her breasts, right thigh were carved out, long gashes extended the sides of her mouth into a macabre smile, and her head was full of bruising and gashes. The eventual autopsy report would reveal that she had been exsanguinated, drained of blood, and thoroughly washed. Her cause of death was a combination of hemorrhaging and shock, due to deep knife lacerations of the face and repeated blows by a heavy metal object to the face and head, and the medical examiner believed she had been dead less than 24 hours before she was found. From the minute reporters got to the crime scene before the police, the investigation was hampered. The Examiner, a large LA newspaper, seemed to be more plugged into the investigation than the authorities themselves. In fact, the police weren't able to identify the victim until the Examiner, which somehow got a hold of the victim's fingerprints, sent them to the FBI and got a match to Elizabeth Short. Once she was identified, the media very quickly dubbed the crime the Black Dahlia murder. The media was in deep on this case, covering it incessantly on the front page every day for months. Every step of the way, the examiner and the other news outlets had detailed information about what the investigators were up to, the suspects that emerged and dismissed, the many confessing Sams that came over, and yes, they reported all of them in real time. 
The examiner was in so deep that FBI memos show that the editor of the paper, who was getting information from the mayor, was in touch with the bureau to express his concern about local police incompetence. Not only that, it wasn't local authorities or the mayor that requested the FBI step in to help with the investigation. It was the examiner editor who did so. As egregious as the media's involvement was, the editor's concern may have been merited. Investigators were able to pinpoint and corroborate that Elizabeth was last seen alive on January 9th, six days before her body was found, when her boyfriend dropped her off at the Biltmore Hotel. But where she disappeared to after that, they had no clue. While hundreds of officers were involved in the investigation, over 2,700 reports were taken, over 300 named suspects, and dozens of false confessors wasted law enforcement's time and resources, it all ultimately amounted to nothing. Two years later, in 1949, an almost coerced confession by a suspect who then sued the city prompted a grand jury investigation. The grand jury convened with the purpose of holding the LAPD responsible for failing to solve Elizabeth Short's murder and the murders and disappearances of numerous other women in the 1940s, but it too ultimately amounted to nothing. No indictment, no accountability. And now, all these decades later, the Black Dahlia murder, the murder of Elizabeth Short, remains one of the most infamous cold cases in contemporary American history. So, let's talk about it.